Hey y'all, this is Ashley and today I'm going to share some tips for traveling with a newborn to four month old. So in the first four months of Wade's life, he's actually traveled a pretty good bit. Most of it has been work trips with us and we are very fortunate that he's gotten to travel with us for those. But we have gone on a couple of camping trips and we've gone to visit family. So most of these trips have been two to three hours away, but we did do what should have been a seven hour trip and what should have been a five hour trip. Um, both were much longer, but these are just tips that we found that have helped us with road trips. So I'm sure it depends on your child and how their day's going. So let's jump into the tips. So the first thing I wanted to share is leave at nap time and arrive at least an hour before bedtime. So typically when we're about to leave for a trip, we make sure he has a good awake period before we leave. And then I feed him one more time right before we get in the car. Diaper change, he's ready to go. And typically at that point, once we start the trip, he'll typically fall asleep. We also want to arrive an hour before bedtime. That way when we get there, he has time to run out that last little bit of energy, um, stretch his legs before he goes to bed. If and we have made the mistake of getting there at or after bedtime. And usually that means that last little bit of the road trip involves um, a very unhappy little boy. So definitely try to arrive at least an hour or longer before bedtime. How's it going? Good. <laughs> We're over halfway there. Yeah. The second thing is to stop every couple of hours. So this will give your baby a chance to get fed. You can change diapers, you can stretch your legs. They can move in their body a little bit before they get put back in there. Uh, we found that it's good to stop maybe with meal times. That way you're getting something to eat and then they're having a good awake period in there. The other thing is look at your your route so make sure you're stopping before you hit those big cities because you don't want to be in the middle of a city and have a baby wake up hungry and crying and need a diaper change and you're stuck in traffic um, we may know that from experience so make sure that you're watching your route but also try to line it up with meal times too if you can when you're traveling, it's going to probably take you at least 50% longer to get to your destination because of all these stops involved. So definitely account for that when you leave and make sure you have plenty of time and you'll get there eventually. <laughs> Number three is to bring some activities for your baby. So we had books and rattles and different little toys. And probably the best thing was I love every, if you've seen that review video, it came with a hangy thing for the car. And so that allowed Wade to be able to kind of entertain himself a little bit when he was awake and it didn't require our constant interaction with him because he would just stare at those cards and just absorb everything about them. So that was kind of an unexpected, like perfect thing that we got right before our seven plus hour road trip. Um, but yeah, definitely have things on hand that you can entertain them with. Another thing I discovered um, just by necessity is, so on my iPhone, I have the OverDrive app that's connected to my library and you can check out books, digital books for free. Well, they also have kid books. So when I was trying to entertain him and get through that last little bit of the trip, I started downloading kid books and I was just reading him different books, just trying to introduce something new to him so his brain would be entertained enough just to like push through and he did great so definitely if you have that availability through your library have the overdrive app on your phone so you can just check out kid books number four and it kind of goes with the prior tip is keep all your essentials at hand so make sure you have your toys close by extra burp cloths your diaper bag, everything is so within reach so you can grab it. So you're not having to pull over, dig stuff out of the back. That's just gonna take up more time. So make sure you can grab everything you need close by to you. Number five is to recreate your bedtime routine the best you can. <laughs> so when we travel, Wade sleeps in a pack and play. We also bring his sound machine. We bring, he sleeps in a zippity zip. 
We bring all the things so it can feel like bedtime. We bring the books we typically read to him right before bed. So as we're putting him down, it may be a new space, but we want him to feel, we want to feel familiar for him. And that's really helped him sleep pretty good as we've traveled. Number six, bring a baby monitor. So the monitor we have is not connected to the internet. And so we can bring it wherever with us. So even if we're camping, we'll bring it and have him monitored inside when he goes to bed as we're hanging out by the campfire. Or if we're in an Airbnb, it lets him go to his own space, take a nap, but we can check on him and make sure he's okay. So the monitor has been great for just making us feel like we do at home, which is like we can check on him, but he is getting the rest that he needs. <laughs> Number seven is bring somewhere for him to sit. So the first time we traveled, we actually forgot to do this. And so that meant it was a lot of us holding him the entire time or him laying down for a nap. We are bringing his boppy lounger. So when we're just chilling, he has a place to sit. Um, also kind of going along with that, we're bringing his baby Bjorn bouncer. Uh, it's great because it folds up flat. So it's gonna be really easy to travel with. He likes that too, because he also does not want to be held all the time. So um, yes, bring somewhere they can sit. Number eight, bring extras of everything. Bring extra sheets, extra passies, extra outfits, extra burp cloths, extra blankets, all the things. You know, having a baby, sometimes you may make it through like one entire outfit all day long. And sometimes you may go through 10. You may need one burp cloth or it may be like a five burp cloth day. So definitely just bring extras just because they're not gonna be, you may not have access to laundry. So number nine kind of goes with the previous one and that's bring laundry detergent if you have, have access to laundry because you wanna make sure you have baby friendly laundry detergent with you. And I found it easy just to bring the little pods. Um, I have some all free and clear, I think is what it's called, just pods. Those are way easier to bring than liquid. And so if you need to do laundry, you can in case there's an accident, which I mean, come on, there probably will be. But also, even if you can do laundry, you want to bring a wet bag, especially if you can't do laundry too. So that way, if they have any accidents or something gets dirty where you don't want to just throw it, throw it back in your suitcase, put in the wet bag. Um, if you watched my diaper bag video, you know I always have wet bags with me because who knows what's going to happen with babies. So number 10 is bring a stroller if possible. And on some of our trips, we've been able to bring it and on others we haven't been able to. But it's really good once you get to your location to get out, stretch your legs. You've been in the car all day, but also to let your baby just be out in the fresh air and kind of experience a new environment. Um, they're tired of being in the car too, bless their hearts. So um, bring a stroller, get outside. And if you don't have, if you can't bring a stroller, then maybe bring a wrap or something so you can just at least go for a short walk. Okay, the last and final tip is be flexible. This isn't traveling like you did before you had a baby where you hit the road and you can stop and go to the bathroom, grab something to eat and keep going. This is a much slower journey. <laughs> and so you, you don't know how it's going to go. It's going to be different every time. Um, and sometimes things go really well. And sometimes you're stuck in a car with a screaming baby and there's nothing you can do besides sit in traffic. So be flexible, take deep breaths and just enjoy the journey and make sure you have a lot of extra time in there. And I know everyone's baby's different and honestly, all of our babies are different on different days. So just enjoy the journey, enjoy time with family and just laugh at the craziness because it's, I mean, there'll be something crazy happened. We changed Wade in like a parking lot because we didn't have anywhere to lay him inside the car. It was so packed. So we laid a blanket on the ground or stuck in traffic and I'm trying to like, lean over and feed him a little bit because he needed some comfort then and we weren't to a spot where we could pull over. So you'll have crazy stories that you get to tell, but just laugh, enjoy it, and have fun traveling as a family. Hopefully these tips have helped you and hopefully um, you got something out of it. If you have some tips that I didn't mention, just mention them below. I'm sure we all can learn from each other. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye guys.